ओके पार और एनर्जी रिसोर्सेस नाउ देर आर सर्टेन मिनरल्स व्हिच आर यूज्ड एज पार नाउ पार डज मीन इट ताकत इट मींस इट डेफिनेटली मींस ताकत बट आउट हियर इट इज द सोर्स of electricity or maybe other uh, you can say the atomic power the thermal power all these resources of energy which are utilized by humans clear and that is why they are called energy resources clear now we read it and hold a pencil in your hand so that anything that is important is picked and remembered energy resources play a vital role in human life energy is required in every field of life it is required to run machines in industry in agriculture in households and for domestic use we need energy resources to make our life easy and comfortable power resources may be categorized as conventional sources and non conventional sources now we have to begin from here the conventional sources before we go into details just know it these were there since years and man has been using it clear yeah? non conventional sources are those sources which are permanent they are not exhaustible the wind energy the solar energy these are non exhaustible energies inexhaustible they are so they are non conventional sources clear yeah? other conventional sources are like your coal petroleum all these things we have been using since years ages and they might get depleted might finish why because the amount in which they are being created is lesser than the amount in which we humans are using them clear yeah? that is why a time might come we might be deficient with these things clear yeah? let's read it conventional sources conventional sources are those sources of energy which we are using for a long period of time and which have been common and non renewable such as firewood and fossil fuels fossil fuels such as coal petroleum natural gas are the main sources of conventional energy these are called fossil fuels as their formation takes place after decaying of plants and animals which get, which got buried under the earth for millions of years and converted into fuels due to great heat and pressure exerted over there so as i told you last time when we met i talked talked about fossil fuels so fossil fuels are those which are which we get after the decay of dead plants and animals which got buried and with the amount of heat and pressure of the earth they have turned into these natural gases the coal the petroleum the natural gases firewood etc clear yeah? now we come on to the first one firewood firewood is the most important source of energy in rural india more than 50% energy required in fulfilling uh, is fulfilled by firewood in the villages of india but the collection of firewood is time consuming and it also creates pollution as well as promotes greenhouse effect due to deforestation the cutting down of trees for firewood is a common activity in rural areas even to today where 50% rural life is dependent on it the cutting down of trees leads to deforestation leading to soil erosion washing away of top soil and thus a time might come which lead, which might lead the land barren clear yeah? so they are very effective but in a long run they are not pollution free and plus they are also very hazardous for the environment next we come on to coal coal is the most commonly found fossil fuel in india as well as in the world it is the like most commonly found it is mainly used in iron and steel industries in glass furnaces i think we have done this okay so basically coal is used for generating electricity or for the forming of various metals such as iron and other industries where it is used in blast furnaces just as in a the press which is used by the the press wala that has coal in it 
that has great amount of heat. Imagine the immense amount of heat on the in the blast furnace, which would melt away the iron. Okay, so those are used in the industry. Now we come on to petroleum. We are aware about the importance of petroleum in today's world. It is widely used to run industrial machinery, factories, aeroplanes, trains, cars, and other means of transport. It is also used to make kerosene, diesel, gasoline, wax, lubricants, etc. Please underline the byproducts which we get from petroleum. Other than the fresh petroleum used in cars and other vehicles, we have these byproducts from petroleum. That means the lubricants, the wax, etc., gasoline, diesel, etc., kerosene, all these are extracted from the main petroleum, and these are the sub offshoots of petroleum. Please underline them. It is also used to make kerosene, uh, sorry. Petroleum is found between the layers of rocks and is drilled from oil fields located in offshore and coastal areas. Underline offshores and coastal areas. Most of the time, since it is trapped between the layers of the, sea, of the earth, now the best place to take it out is in sea, where you get those layers of uh, visible. Yeah, you go inside the water, you know the layers are there, and within those layers, you drill up to the place where you find it. Most of the time, the petroleum, most of the time, drilling has been done near offshore next to the ship, okay, in coastal areas, okay? Now, petroleum is, and its uh, deriv uh, derivatives uh, are called black gold as they are very valuable. Now, all the other things derived from petroleum, like kerosene, diesel, gasoline, etc. these are the byproducts, and they all have been clubbed together, and they are called black gold. Please underline black gold. Why? Because they are very precious and at the same time, they are finishing at a great speed. So just as we preserve gold and just as we preserve gold and call it precious, so is petroleum for running around anywhere. Yeah? Iran, Iraq, Saudi Arabia and Qatar are the chief petroleum producing countries in the world. Please underline them. That USA, Russia, Venezuela and Algeria are other major producers. In India, it is produced in Digboy, underline it. India, then underline Digboy in Assam, and Mumbai High. Assam is the oldest oil producing state in India, underline Assam, oldest state producing petroleum. Natural gas. Now, while you're extracting petroleum from a particular place, the natural gas also is out. Uh, natural gas is the again used for flammable things. It is flammable. So let's see. Natural gas is found with petroleum deposits and is released when crude oil is brought to the surface. It is used as a domestic and industrial fuel. Please underline domestic and industrial fuel. It is used for burning and for industrial works. It can be easily transported through pipelines in environment friendly and cheaper is environment friendly and cheaper than oil. Underline environment friendly and underline cheaper than oil. And why? Because it can be easily transported through pipelines in different areas. Yeah, it does not involve pollution or any kind of hazard for the environment. Yeah. Russia. Norway, UK, and the Netherlands are the major producers of natural gas. These underline the uh, major producers. Then the commercial production of natural gas in India is limited. In India, it is found in the eastern regions. Please underline in India. And now come to the things, uh, names I'm telling you. Assam, Arunachal Pradesh, and Tripura. In the western Gujarat, underline that, Mumbai High. Now, in the south, natural gas reserves have been found in Kaveri and Krishna Godavari basins. These are the few areas where natural gas in India are found. 
even if you forget about the word, please see that you remember these things in India. Yeah. Very few countries in the world have sufficient natural gas reserves of their own. Nowadays, the conventional source of energy are going to be depleted due to more consumption as compared to their production. Now, they are getting depleted, they are getting scarce. Why? Because their consumption is more than their formation, than the amount is produced. Yeah? So that is the major reason why they are getting lesser day by day. Next. I lost the line. These sources create pollution also. Therefore, there is an alarming need to develop non-conventional and environment-friendly sources of energy. Now, since most of them, they create and are a major source of pollution. So they are a threat to the environment anyhow. So we are asked as human beings to look after and protect the environment by moving on and switching over our needs to non-conventional resources. Yeah. Now we come on to next electricity about which each and every one of us know it and it's a major part of our life. The moment it's gone, the oh God, that's gone, right? So let's see. It is very much needed to run machinery, electrical appliances, etc. Electricity is of two types, hydroelectricity and thermal electricity. As the word tells you, hydro, water is related. When the water is falling with a gushing speed from a cliff or a high waterfall, the moment it falls, there are turbines which run and generate. As they fall, they make, they make the turbines move. And this sudden movement produces electricity, which is again connected to generators and is through uh, the power points or you can call what are transformers. They are generated and transported to different areas. Now, thermal, it is created by the coal, the natural gases. They, when they are producing electricity, it is called thermal electricity. Okay, I'll quickly read it out for you. Hydroelectricity is produced by water after falling from a great, from a height. The force of falling water is used to produce electricity with the help of turbines. The falling water flows through pipes and over turbine blades placed at the bottom of the dam. The moving blades then turn the generator to produce electricity. One fourth of the world's electricity is produced by hydel pump. Underline this. One fourth. Since all the rivers and uh, waterfalls, they have a gush, they have a current, a flow, so it is used in most of the cases in the rivers. Clear? Yeah? The leading producers of hydel power in the world are Paraguay, Norway, Brazil, and China. Bhakra Nangal, now underlined. Bhakra Nangal, Gandhi Sagar, Nagarjuna Sagar, and Damodar Valley projects are some important hydropower producing stations in India. So I hope I'm clear with this. Next, thermal electricity. Thermal electricity, sorry, electricity produced by heat is called as thermal electricity. It is produced by petroleum, coal, or natural gas. Other than water, any other thing which is used, that is called thermal electricity. In India, most of the energy requirements, that means about 70%, is fulfilled by thermal energy. For us, though we have these number of dams which we have mentioned above, yet major portion, 70% out of 100, we are using and consuming the natural resource, the natural gas, petroleum, or coal, etc., for making and generating electricity. Now, coming on to non-conventional sources of energy. It's very easy. I'll quickly read and in between I'll keep on explaining. Great stress is ex exerted over the conventional sources of energy which leads to their depletion and their reserves would get exhausted if they are used at the same rate. Therefore, there is a pressing need to use non-conventional and eco-friendly sources of energy. Please underline non-conventional and eco-friendly, such as, now which are those? 
solar energy, underline that, wind energy, tidal energy. Solar, wind, tidal. Solar from sun, wind from air, and tidal, have you heard about this term? From sea, the tides, the high tide and low tide, the gush of that is used. Yeah? Sea has tides, oceans have tides, high tide and low tide, you must have heard about it. If not, we'll read it. Don't worry. I thought you must be knowing it, but no problem. Solar energy, the first one, it's easy. The sun is the ultimate source of energy to all living things over the world, over the Earth's surface. Solar energy trapped from the sun can be used in solar cells, photocells to produce electricity. These cells are also joined into solar panels to generate power for heating and lighting, for lighting purpose. Tropical countries like India have vast potential to harness solar energy as these countries are blessed with abundant sunshine. In India, the largest solar plant is located in Bhuj in Gujarat. Please underline. And let me tell you, Bhuj is the first place under the leadership, under the chief ministership of Narendra Modi, our present prime minister, when he was the chief minister there in Gujarat. He was the one who first laid the foundation of the solar plant. He cons conserved the solar energy and used it as a basic form of energy. And today, nearly the whole of Gujarat gets its electricity supply through these solar panels, through the trapping of solar energy. So it's commendable, isn't it? Because sun would always be there. It will not exhaust. Yeah, so he trapped that sun energy and Gujarat people, they have been using it since ages now. So it's a bridge in Gujarat. Clear sky, scanty rainfall, and absence of clouds are the ideal conditions to trap solar energy. Clear sky, no clouds, less rain is an ideal condition. That means a pleasant weather and a sunny weather is good enough for solar creation, solar energy creation. It is inexhaustible and non-polluting, but it is expensive also. That is true. It's one-time investment. At my place, not exactly at my place, but at my mother's house, we have switched over to solar panels. And one-time investment is huge. It comes to nearly 20 lakh or plus. Okay, once one-time installment. But then after that, the electricity supply is really under control. The number of units that you get for reading, you must have, you, your parents must be paying electricity bill. So that supply is really under control. Yeah? Now, wind energy. Wind is an inexhaustible source of energy. Windmills are used to produce electricity. The high-speed winds rotate the windmill, which is connected to a generator to produce electricity. Mainly coastal regions and mountain passes are ideal places to harness wind energy as wind. winds are strong and steady here. Wind farms clusters are mainly found in the Netherlands, underline Netherlands. Windmill farms are basically in the Netherlands, but at the same time, they are found in higher mountain regions or near the coastal areas where the wind is blowing nearly all the time and it's at constant. So those windmills, they move and the wings, as they move, the turbines are connected and the generator is attached to Give the electricity, not the turbines, the generator is attached to produce electricity. Germany, Denmark, UK, USA, and Spain are also popular in wind energy production. Famous wind farm clusters are found in Tamil Nadu, please underline Tamil Nadu, in India. India is also called as wind superpower due to rapid development in wind energy. Such energy is also non-polluting, safe, and clean, but it creates noise pollution. Windmills are costly to set up, and they also disturb radio and TV reception and are harmful to bird life. So that these are some disadvantages. They are very bulky. The stall installation is very difficult, and it's time-consuming, plus it's expensive. It is a threat to the birds which are flying. It is getting the signals deflected of the radios and television, but at the same time, it is the easiest source 
where this again the source is inexhaustible and india is called as i told you here fifth super power we said the like that word now we come on to nuclear energy now this is another very typical and very dangerous because if it is used in a negative way it could lead to nuclear warfare and mass destruction nothing would survive after nuclear war okay so let's go on nuclear power is obtained from naturally occurring radioactive elements please underline naturally occurring radioactive elements what are radioactive elements they have just with a small little click they could generate immense amount of energy immense amount of energy. yeah with a small little click they don't need to be burnt completely ek chote se atom mein of a nuclear of a yes nuclear atom that has tremendous amount of energy and the new highly radioactive elements they are told you below i tell you now these fuels undergo nuclear fission in nuclear reactors and emit power the usa and europe are the greatest producers of nuclear power we said like usa and europe recently india has also made an agreement known as nuclear deal we said like that with america for getting necessary material for its nuclear reactors this deal will play an important role in the production of electricity and perhaps the problem of electricity will be solved to a great extent this energy emits large amounts of energy but energy but it generates radioactive waste and it is expensive too rajasthan and jharkhand have large deposits of uranium and thorium these are like rajasthan and gujarat jharkhand sorry and these two radioactive elements they have told you uranium and thorium now they are highly reactive and nuclear fission nuclear reaction takes place at a very fast speed so india is gradually developing its nuclear deal under the nuclear deal it has gone in collaboration with america for its nuclear projects clear yeah. kalpakkam in tamil nadu and the line tarapur in maharashtra narora in up and kaida in rajasthan are the important nuclear power stations located in india you need to know them all clear yeah. now we come on to geothermal energy to produce geothermal energy the earth heat is used underline earth heat zameen ki garmi se jo energy hum pa rahe that is called earth heat geothermal as we go deep in the earth the temperature rises we all know that clear yeah? the more you go inside it is the crust and the core and the crust mantle core this is the sequence so it gets hotter and hotter as you go inside the temperature rises at many places this heat energy may come in the form of come to the surface in the form of hot springs now many a times there are some underwater uh, underground water which gets warm up because of the presence of this earth they are the underground water is at that level where the earth is hot and so this warm water as it leaks out it forms springs clear yeah? now this heat is used to produce electricity these hot water streams they are used to produce electricity and that is why it is called geothermal geothermal isn't it yes now it is clean eco friendly and always available so these are the advantages but it is far away from the cities therefore it is expensive to transport it largest geothermal power plant is located in the usa is underlined new zealand iceland philippines and central america are other important countries which produce geothermal energy in india geothermal plants are located in these underlined manikaran in himachal pradesh and puja valley in ladakh puga valley Uga Valley in Ladakh. Now we come on to tidal energy. The sea water rises and falls at certain periods of time in a day due to the gravitational pull of moon and sun. This is called tide. Now, what is tide? The gravitational pull of the moon. 
moon is closest to earth as a heavenly body it is our satellite natural satellite now it also exerts a little pull now throughout the day a time comes when the earth's pull is there a uh, sorry moon's pull is there and the earth is not attracted only the water it rises from all sides clear yeah? and that is the time we have tides and that is called high tide clear yeah? once the tide is over gravitational pull is over we have low tides now see energy generated from tides is called tidal energy now tidal energy can be harnessed by building dams at narrow openings of the sea during high tide the energy of the tides is used to turn the tur turbines installed in the dam to produce electricity very simple during the high tide next to the mouth of the sea that means where the rivers are all gushing and getting into the sea at that very point they prefer building up dams which due to the high tide and low tide as the water is gushing with a great speed it is again running the turbine and the same tidal power which we were talking of is now called tidal power did you get it water is the only source but the tide is the source not the running of river water yeah i'll quickly read out tidal it is pollution free and inexhaustible it has some drawbacks also as it destroys wildlife habitat and it is and is difficult to harness you cannot easily harness it it is difficult for wildlife uh, i will not rush I have made this point very clear in my mind. So we'll stop here for today.